thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate your time. You just got into Chicago. You just landed from Germany, and I'm catching you right on the heels of coming off an airplane. I want to talk to you a little bit about today about what's going on with uh, with Bayer, how things are going. And the first question I have for you is, there's lots of mergers and acquisitions going on in this day and age, and spe specifically in the seed industry. What things would Bayer and you specifically be looking at as you're engaging in some of these potential partnerships? So certainly, yes, has been pretty uh, pretty active right now, and um, yeah, we're looking at uh, obviously pr uh, companies now that fit our strategy. Uh, we're looking at uh, you know companies that have you know really good products. Um, it's important to have good people, and so yes. we have good people, good products. And what's also important for us is if the company has a kind of a platform. Um, this is something which we can build on, and something that has a little bit of longevity uh, going forward. So uh, people's always a big deal, and I know Bayer has really focused in on that being a, uh, a key ingredient. When we're looking at these collaborations, what kind of elements, though, are, are really critical to see that to collaboration work? Yeah, collaborations are a rather interesting phenomenon. Um, you know, generally speaking, we'd maybe just go straight for an acquisition, right? Mm. Uh, very often, you know, companies will come to us. They usually startup companies. They'll come and say, you know, how about taking an equity stake in the company? Um, very little reluctant to take equity stakes in, in companies. We'll maybe fund uh, venture capital companies, but primarily we do that so that we can get a bit of a deal flow going. But collaborations are really important to us. This does a whole lot of different things. First of all, you get to know the company, right? You get to know the people. And uh, you get to know the products. And uh, it's that during that period of collaborating, whether it's just collaborating on testing a product, or maybe we're testing a product and we've been taking it commercial. Or there's also often where you just go straight into an R&D collaboration where you kind of like invent new things together. And during this process of getting to know the company, getting to know the people, getting to know the products, this is a really, really valuable. And invariably this kind of like de-risks the company, right? It mm. allows you to understand where the risks are and where they're not. Invariably, you've paid a little bit more for a companies after you've had your collaboration, but that's okay. That's exactly what we're looking for. And so if we had a choice between either diluting an investor's equity or going for collaboration prior to an acquisition, getting to know you, that's probably our preference. So if you can go in knowing as much as possible about the organization puts you in a much better position to, to be able to collaborate in a useful way. I think in this day and age we keep hearing these stories about collaborations going sideways and some collaborations being hugely successful and patience seems to be one of the key ingredients. Does that ring true for you folks? It does, um, but patience is not always on the side of, the, uh, of either company. Uh, invariably you've got investors that have invested their money and they want to have a quick turnaround. Uh, so patience is not really something that's uh, high on the agenda of both. Mm -hmm. There's also this whole competitive, let's say, tension that's going on. Mm -hmm. There's not that many companies out there, and we're all trying to vie for the same one. It's good for the investor who's invested in a startup. It's really good for the startup company and its people. But uh, clearly, um, yeah, time is not uh, is not our friend in some of these in some of these acquisitions. What positive role does the does, does the investor play in that selling acquisition process? Yeah, you know the the whole preparation of selling a company is really important. And so what we've seen in the marketplace is some investors are really good, and uh, some investors maybe could have done a lot better and got got a bit more money for the company they've invested in. But what generally speaking, what investors can do is prepare the company. And if you've got an investor that has some expertise, and what we found is some of the venture capital companies have actually hired veterans from the industry. Mm. So these are veterans that really know how the companies work, what their processes are, and what are the key things that they're looking for. And so if an investor can have that kind of expertise on board, it really makes a big difference to the valuation uh, of, the, of the company and preparing it, knowing what the company looks for, a company like Bayer looks for, uh, trying to understand how to prepare not only the, the company per se beforehand, but also prepare them for the process. And probably most important for us is to prepare for after the sale. Right. Any advice on that preparation? Any things that you see on a regular basis, Garth, that, uh, that you would give as advice along the way? 
Yeah, I think for the the process of preparing the company, I, I would my advice would be start as early as you possibly can. And if it's years, that's great. If it's months, then okay. But if you look at the whole process of preparing the company, it's really trying to say let's prepare the people. Uh, having a look at the portfolio or, or the products, uh, making certain that that platform is really, really solid and that you can build new, new things on that. And then also that whole preparation of making the company look as, you know, as if it's really professional. Right. And so if you look at the whole process actually to say, you know, what's the financial status of the company, the intellectual property status of the company, these are really, really important parts. And then the actual process, the physical process of the, the months in which you're going to sell and divest the company, that's really important. Because if you look at the, very often the comp startup company wants a, a quick turnaround. Mm. But if you really understand the governance process within the strategic company, you need to be a little patient as you mm. go through that process. Mm. And then importantly that I always see something that sometimes destroys value in a company is the people. And really to prepare the people to say, you know, from an entrepreneurial, fast-paced, small company environment, you know, prepare them for going into the uh, into a larger uh, company and the exciting things that you can find in a larger company. And very often investors have professionals or have experienced people on their on their staff who can give that kind of advice and make that kind of preparation. How do you create a target list, Garth? How, how, how do you folks pull together a, a list of people that would make for good potential collaborators and, and good potential acquisitions to become part of a bear family? Yeah, this is, uh, this is probably one of the exciting parts. We call it origination. Okay. <laughs> and uh, clearly we start off with a strategy. So the company will either decide that, you know, its strategy, I'm going to either invest now in organic uh, growth, um, I'm going to invest in maybe collaborations, or I'm just going to put more money into R&D. Um, but let's assume in most cases what happens, companies are not that patient, and what they'll say, let's do all three. Um, and uh, we have uh, various ways of being able to set up the target uh, list. Clearly, if it's going into a new space, for example, when we ventured out into the seed industry or we ventured out into biologics or into uh, uh, traits, um, there what happens is we can go into what we call active origination or active target finding, where we'd approach certain banks, uh, venture capital companies, and we'd actually share with them quite some detail what our strategy is. And uh, they would obviously have a network and go out and find. Very often if we are going into a new sector, we kind of like know what the landscape is. And so you do set up a priority list of targets that are out there. Interestingly enough, of course, is the minute you make your first acquisition, then it becomes very public. And especially if you make a big one, then it becomes public. And it is, well, there's this whole flood of little companies coming uh, to, to, uh, at us. And that's really exciting. And that's really what we want. And so. That's kind of like the way we have an active target screening where we go out and look for them and they're kind of like a passive or a reactive where we find targets coming towards us. Right. You established um, just a few minutes ago how important people are in this process. They're obviously critical to success. Can you talk a little bit about the characteristics that you look for for your team in bringing companies on side and then the characteristics that you look for in that team that you've seen over as a pattern that maybe make the best mix? Yeah, yes, that's a really good question. And that's, as we said, is part of the, the value of the company that you're acquiring. And uh, yes, it's true that post-merger integration is uh, the part which sometimes destroys most of the value of a company. Mm -hmm. If you do it incorrectly, mm -hmm. we're not prepared for it properly. Um, we go to all great lengths in trying to determine what the value of the company is. <laughs> um, but in the end, if we don't do that merger and that integration correctly, it can destroy a lot of the value. So I think as far as the, the Bayer is concerned, as far as the company is concerned and the, the teams there, is to really have that anticipation, that excitement, that you know something new is coming uh, on board. And uh, that preparation is important. And then the preparation of the company itself uh, is critical to us. Some of the things you're looking for is to, is to really 
share with both teams, whether the teams within the company or the new team that's joining, you know, share with them as much information as you possibly can as to what to expect. Right. It's all about expectation management. And, uh, you know, there is saying you, yes, you're going to be a fast paced entrepreneurial company, but as you come in, you know, really look for some of the exciting parts about being part of a big family like they are, right. being part of something that's you know, really, really exciting, and there's there's value in that. Um, the opportunities are bigger. You can be part of something that's larger than what you maybe were before. But yes, it is that uh, that preparation. And what we find now is that there's more and more milestones being put onto the company. You know, milestone payments after an acquisition has been made, and these milestone payments are very much very often related to retention of key individuals. But not only retention of key individuals, but also milestones that can only be achieved if the key individuals stay with the company. Mm, right, okay. And with that kind of incentive going forward, it's really our dream and our hope that these people will find you know, enjoyment, excitement, working with a large company, and then of course stay. Because after all, that is where the value really lies, is with the people that have created this great company that you've just acquired. Really well said. I like that a lot. Um, there's lots more to come. I expect Bayer is in uh, full speed ahead, and we appreciate that. And I thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me today, Garth. Thank you. It's a pleasure.